And please be seated. Give it up for Brian. All right, well, good morning, Miami Valley Church. Good morning, church. How are we doing? All right. It's great to be here this morning. Uh, Lauren and I got back yesterday from our spring break. Um, spring is still quite cold, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, but there was some days in the 70s, so that was great. Uh, but, uh, but we had a wonderful time and just, uh, just good to uh, connect with the boys and connect with Lauren, of course. And uh, we won prizes when we did all these different activities and people were giving us free ice cream and just because one of our boys was crying. It was like, oh, thanks. So Lauren, Lauren and I were like, hey, should we cry too? Maybe we'll, you know, we're adults. Maybe they'll give us a meal. Like, hey. Who knows what will happen? But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was just uh, it was a great, great time um, and, and really, really cool. And it was interesting. Uh, we were in Branson, uh, Missouri. And uh, if you think it's Missouri, you'll have to talk to uh, me personally later because uh, I was raised being told it was Missouri, so, uh, so, uh, but anyways, um, no, it's, uh, it was cool, because, like, people were just talking about God, like, no big deal, like, it's just, like, uh, it just made me be like, yeah, this is how we are, and this is what we do, and, and this thing is, uh, having fun, having a mind of its own, but, um, but, yeah, it was just really, really cool, we even went to a theme park on Thursday, and they we were watching the show, and in the middle of the show, they started talking about the Bible, and scripture, and, and Jesus and Mary and I was just like, there's a different vibe here than uh, than anywhere else I've I've, I've been. Um, and so it was just it was just a great time. Uh, but it's really really good to be back um, and, and to see all of you and uh, just to be uh, together again uh, for for us personally. Obviously, you guys have been together uh, over the last week. But um, uh, and also uh, just uh, just to kind of go off uh, uh, Michael's announcement with the World Discipleship Summit in Orlando. It is. Two years delayed because, uh, you know, that's just how things have been lately. Uh, but I do, I, I think uh, the longer that, you know, even as we come out of COVID, which are we out of, I don't even know anymore, I, whatever. And who knows what it'll be, what it'll be like in six months or whatever. But um, I, I'm starting to realize this personally, this kind of my funkiness, my spiritual funkiness. And, um, and uh, you know, I think we all have gotten some some funkiness going on and so I, I just really encourage you like it's it's gonna be amazing I know it's money I know it's a lot but if you can find a way to get there and be you'll be there with you know 12 15,000 people uh, that that love God and strive to follow him uh, not the way that the world says to follow God but the way the scriptures say to follow God and uh, so I'd really really encourage you and implore you and it's going to be an amazing time, and the schedule is out, um, and it's it's going to be phenomenal. And so, uh, do whatever you can. I know I know that's a big ask, but uh, but I, I do think uh, we you know it's hard to see where we're at, uh, but luckily because of the things that have transpired over the last couple of weeks, I've been able to kind of be like, oh wow, I don't even think about doing that. Um, and so, uh, so anyways, just, uh, just really want to encourage you with that. It, it'll, it'll be a really, really good time. Yeah. And uh, for sure a time that uh, will be refreshing and inspire us and helping us move forward. So, uh, and then uh, last but not least, uh, how about those Tar Heels? Go Tar Heels. So, uh, uh, always been a Tar Heels fan. I think Kansas is definitely the better team for sure. Uh, and, uh, uh, ready to be tarred and feathered. And, um, but uh, that was, uh, you know what? When you beat when you beat uh, Duke at Cameron and then you beat Duke in the Final Four, I feel like the Tar Heels already won the national championship, so uh, so we're good. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, kudos to Mike Shashevsky, what a career um, for sure. I will miss that that uh, connection with Duke and Carolina in that way. But uh, anyways, that was really really cool to see uh, to see that last night. If you're a Tar Heel fan, of course. If you're a Duke fan, I'm sorry, but you guys had a great season as well. So. Uh, but, uh, but you know, uh, in two weeks from today, it's actually Easter. Uh, and so today, we're going to start our Easter series uh, called Closer to Easter. Uh, and so each Sunday from now till Easter Sunday, we're just going to get a little closer to Easter, to the story of Easter. You know, I think uh, you, you can think about Christmas time. And at Christmas, we, man, I want to have a really focused Christmas 
thinking about Jesus, thinking about what it means that he came to this earth, that he came, he came as a baby, and, and that here he is, right? And that, I think about that thought, and I, I think we think that thought a lot, but I don't know if we really think that thought much about Easter, and be like, man, I really want to connect to, to uh, the cross, to the idea of resurrection, and, and redemption, and the idea of, of forgiveness, and the idea of sacrifice, and, and just what Jesus went through to go to the cross. And so, uh, so hopefully these next couple weeks, this gets us closer to Easter like we never have before. Yeah. So, but in order for us to get closer to Easter, we've got to start somewhere really far from Easter, super far and a place that many of us don't like. I don't like it. You guys might like it, but I have a feeling you might not like it. And so we're, we're starting in a place that maybe we want to see from a distance because then we can say, oh, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, it was great. It was over there. And I didn't go in there, but I saw it with my own eyes. And yeah, cool. Right on. I saw it. The desert is where we begin the journey to get closer to Easter. So, and we got to remember that the desert, we may not love the desert, but God, he loves the desert. He loves the desert a lot. And so it's off to the desert we go. We're going on this journey for the next couple weeks. And, we, and this journey will help us get closer to Easter. And so in the desert is where we begin. And we're going to begin in Isaiah 40. All right. So uh, turn your Bibles to Isaiah 40. Uh, that's where we're going to be today. Right. And um, we, will, uh, we will start there in verse 1. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'll open up in a prayer. And then we'll dive into Isaiah 40 starting in verse 1. Uh, God, uh, thank you that we can uh, be here together today, that we have a place to uh, sing to you, to pray to you, to think about Jesus and the cross, uh, to think about what an honor it is uh, to give our wealth that you have given to us, just simply giving it back to you, uh, to hear about some of the announcements and things that uh, you are uh, orchestrating and putting together for us to uh, just stay close to you, as that is our theme this year of, of Closer. And I pray, God, that this, uh, this is a time that we can be closer to the Easter story like we never have before, God. That we can uh, move our hearts and, and challenge our hearts and direct our hearts and, and help us walk in ways where Easter is on our minds. Where Easter is coming out of our mouths, God. Where Easter is, uh, is something that we just uh, are desiring to learn more about and just thinking about Jesus and our Lord and Messiah and our Savior and what he went through during this time so long ago, God. Uh, I pray, uh, please take out any distractions, God. Please take out a big championship game tomorrow. That doesn't matter at all compared to, any of, uh, to, compared to Jesus and uh, all the other distractions that there can be, God. Please, please, God, just help us really focus in and dive into this uh, today, God. Thank you and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so in Isaiah, starting in verse 1 of chapter 40. <clears throat> Here we go. It says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. I do want to stop there just for one second. In verse one, it talks about this idea of comfort, right? Think about how much comfort we really need right now. Mm -hmm. Think about even just the first three full months that we as a community of faith, of, a, of followers of Jesus, wow. the challenges and grief and the, the loss that we've just experienced just in this room. We need comfort. And then that's this, that's, that's make the picture even bigger. And two years, we need comfort. We need comfort desperately. And you know, so that, I just wanted to share that thought. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue in verse three. It says, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert, some translations say wilderness, a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And so, you know, it's great to know that we can go to God and we can be comforted. That in itself is an amazing comfort to think that God, who he is, all his qualities, all his, all, all his greatness is willing to provide that for us. And so in this passage, there's this voice. His voice is coming out and it's coming out from the desert. And that's where we see the glory of the Lord in the desert. And that's why as we take this journey to get closer to Easter, we've got to start right there in this arid, dry place of a desert. And so remember, God loves the desert. But do we? I don't think we love the desert. The desert times of our lives. Do we love those times? The low points in our lives. The unrefreshing times, the energy sapping times. We don't look forward to them at all. And we don't love them at all. We always want those mountaintop experiences, right? Where everything's going great, where it's full of joy. And and we're just, we we just, man, life, we got it figured out. I remember that thought driving down Thousand Oaks Boulevard in Southern California when I was 21 years old. I was a junior in college. I was driving my dad's Acura Integra Red. And I was listening to Step on Wolf, Magic Carpet Ride, and I had the windows down, and I was like, I got life figured out! But no, I don't. But let's remember the desert has some really good things for us. Some great things in the desert. There's great things there. It's not bad. The desert is not as bad as you think it is. And so... Amen. God has a heart for the desert. Because in the desert, God took his people. Think about that. He took Israel into the desert from Egypt, and they were there for 40 years. So imagine that whole story of of the Exodus, and and imagine the the two bookends there of, of that story, right? God removes Israel from Egypt, and then for 40 years, they're in the desert. Where God, what does he do? He molds his people, and he prepares them to become a people of him. That's really what God wants for us, to be molded and shaped to be his people, to be his sons and daughters, to be who he created us to be. No longer were Israel to be molded by Egypt or the Canaanites. God had them in the desert so they could focus on him and not have them influence Israel. And so I want, you know, I want a people that I call my own, is what God was saying. So they reflect my glory and my purpose in this world, that this is what I desire and this is what the world needs. And so to the desert, they will go. And so this is what happens in the desert. It's where we get most of our molding and shaping. It occurs in the desert. It's where we get most of our growth. It happens in the desert. How does that happen in the desert? Nothing grows in the desert. We grow in the desert. We grow spiritually in the desert. There's no water in the desert. God's in the desert. God loves the desert because in the desert, God is able to shape us into who he wants us to be. In the desert, we learn to be God's people. In the desert, we learn to live by faith. In the desert, we learn to rely on God. In the desert, we learn that we can't live this life on our own away from God. In the desert, we learn how valuable and how amazingly essential and important it is that we have a relationship with God. What else is so great about the desert? Well, a second thought is God's quiet voice can be heard in the desert. Think about the noisy lives we live. They're not just noisy, but man, they are loud. They're so loud. And two things can really distract us from hearing God's purpose clearly. One, one, is, one of the things that can distract us is there's just a lot of noise out there. TV, movies, internet, family and friends, they can all be good things, by the way, guys. They can all be good things. But we have a lot of demands on our life. 
And so those demands push out the voice of God in our life because of all those other things and noises out there. I think another thing that can occur that helps us lose the voice of God and not hearing the voice of God is comfort. How many times does someone tell you, I don't really see a need for God? I've got everything I need. I've, like Leo shared in, in his contribution talk, I, we've been blessed. We've, we've got this and we've got that. Yeah. yeah, it's easy. Man, look at the house we got and I've got, I've got this yard and I've got this and I've got that and I, I'm comfortable. I'm good. I, I, I got it. I, I've got this figured out. I got my degree or if you don't have your degree, but you got this cranking job and, and, and man, things are great. I think a lot of people believe that, that man, I've got all these things that the world says, yeah, good job. But comfort can easily drown out the word of God because everyone else is applauding you and saying, you, you've, you've got it figured out. You know, and so, you know, even, even lately for me, you know, especially February, February was a, was a tough month for our family. Uh, with the loss of my father-in-law and uh, going to, to Roanoke twice uh, for, for a week, one week, and then you know a couple weeks later going back for another week. It was not an easy thing, and I, I felt, felt burnt out. I felt like uh, I didn't know what I was doing, which is fine. To not, it's okay to not know what I was doing. I was really concerned about Lauren and just being the best husband I could be for her uh, during this time. And, um, and just trying to figure out, figure that out, and maneuver through that. And uh, but one thing that that I really lost during that time was was you guys. I lost talking to you guys. Uh, maybe it's because I was gone for a couple weeks and trying and, and focusing. But I lost praying with you guys, or just being open with you guys, and sharing with you guys. And I, you know, I got back from our second full week and was talking to Chris Hayes on the phone, and I just lost it. I broke down. I didn't even. I didn't even know. It was just in conversation that all of a sudden I was like, "Whoa, I am totally disconnected uh, from uh, from from those that God has given me great relationships with, to love and care for." And it it, it was just, yeah, it was, this was kind of out there in the desert on my own, yeah. and uh, was trying my best to to stay connected to God. And not that I wasn't staying connected to God, but I also was just yeah. keeping lots of things in yeah. and not talking much because I didn't have time to talk because I was taking care of what I need to take care of. And uh, you know, you get to learn in the desert, right? And uh, February was a desert month for me personally. Uh, you know, and I think we, 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 we serve and we thrive in the desert because in the desert is where we see God's provisions. His provisions are really easy to see yeah. in the desert. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a constant dependency on God in the desert. We learn it's better to be with God in the tough circumstances than it is better not to have God in good circumstances. You know, I think in the desert, you just realize how good it is to be with God. Yeah. It's like being in the trenches, right? And you're in that war and you're with your comrades and you're, you're, you know, you know, you you. There are people with you, heart and soul, no matter what happens, they are not going to leave you. They are not going to remove you. They are not going to say away with you, you evildoer, you sinful guy that does not live to the glory of God whatsoever. No, they're going to fight tooth and nail for you. It's in those trenches, those relationships. You have that unit. And in the desert, you have that, that relationship with God is so much clearer. It's just like when, you know, going through the desert scenarios of your life, the relationship you have with God, it's unique. It's different than when you're not in the desert. It's not as maybe abundant. It's not as clear. It's not as focused. It's not as certain. It's not as secure. It's, it's, it's just so obvious when you're in the desert. And God loves the desert. You know, when you think about the desert... This is why we begin in the desert, because God loves to mold us where we can hear his voice clearly and become his people by, this, by him descending on us. Our relationship with God is, is like no other time when we're in the desert. The desert, it is a great place. 
And here's some amazing things God has taught me in the last two years, because I feel like the last two years has been somewhat of a desert. You know, I was on the phone yesterday uh, just for a short time with, uh, with uh, Mohan Nanjadan, who just retired from leading the church in London where Lauren and I served for, for a couple years. And uh, he's like, how are things going? And I'm like, things are going great, but you know, we moved here when COVID started and you know, it's still kind of, I guess going, but things are good, but it's just been weird. And so over the last two years, you guys have heard me share some of these things. What are some things I've learned over the last two years? That God has shown me that I don't think without COVID, I wouldn't have realized. God has shown me how valuable it is to listen. Yes, listening to my peers and my friends, <laughs> listening to people, but just stopping and listening and seeing what God brings my way in those pausing, quiet times. Have you guys seen those Powerade commercials during March Madness? Have you guys seen those at all? It's a cool, it's like, uh, uh, Press pause is Powerade's new slogan. And the idea of you gotta, after you play a game and after you work hard, you gotta pause because you gotta refresh and drink your Powerade so that way you can go play again. But I, I like that idea of we gotta pause. We gotta pause and we gotta listen. And for sure, that's one thing. You know, I think another thing in COVID is God's got this. God's got this. Okay, God, we're moving today in and we can't even meet with the church for 10 months face to face because we have to do it virtually. Like what? Like that, that yeah. what? Brian, I got this. Okay, you got this, cool. Brian, slow down, slow down. I want you to slow down. It's time to slow down, it's time to pause. Brian, retreat, spend time with me, retreat. Stop, talk to me. And I also think share, you know, that uh, accept, accept my grace, God, Brian, accept my grace realize how great my grace is. Those are just some of the things that I feel like I've learned <laughs> over the last two years. And this leads me in all this thing, all these things that, you know, I feel like in this last two years that I've learned, it leads me to this group of people called the Essians. Maybe you know about the Essians. No, they're not a Star Wars thing or nothing like that. They're, they're a biblical thing. The Essians were a group of people about 150 years before Jesus that they were sick of the corruption going on in the temple. The temple was sort of a, a place that was bought. Uh, and it was bought by people we read about in the Bible, the Sadducees. Uh, you know, the, the group of people, the Sadducees, they bought their way into these positions of political stances they had in the temple. They were like corrupt politicians. How about that? Yeah. That's, that's actually, that, they weren't meant to be there, but they bought their way in to have position, to have power, to have clout. But they were there. Imagine a world with corrupt politicians trying to buy their way into power. Just imagine that. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Just imagine that. These Essenes were sick of that. They didn't want that. The temple was corrupted. This isn't what they wanted. This wasn't God. They felt distracted, they felt confused. They're like, this isn't what the scriptures say. This is nuts, this is crazy, this isn't cool at all. And so these Essenes who were related to the Sadducees basically said, we don't want anything to do with this. So they wanted to get away, they wanted to get away from the noise, they wanted to get away from the comfort, they wanted to get away from the worldliness of, of the temple that had been corrupted. So they left and they became this secluded group. And they were kind of like, uh, I'd say like a present day kind of Amish, right? Where they left the crowds and they went and lived in, in, in like kind of their communities. And so these communities where the Essenes were, where we, where we have found where they were, was in a community called Qumran. Uh, you can see Qumran right there. Uh, that is the Dead Sea. I don't know why that's Google Maps. It's, for some reason there's snow on the Dead Sea or something like that. Definitely not, no snow there whatsoever, but, uh, but that's how it came out. And so, um, you know, so the Essians, they, they go out by the Dead Sea. And we know that they were there because the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the caves of, of Qumran. 
and the Dead Sea Scrolls were created and made by the Essenes. And so we know that they lived in that area. Lauren and I have been there uh, where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. As you can see, look at all the vegetation. It is abundantly growing with vegetation, right? No, it's not. It's not at all. There's no vegetation there. The, the Essenes went to an isolated place. They isolated themselves because they wanted to be a community of people with the, uh, with the goal to obey everything that God commanded them. And so they had this intense focus on studying out the text. Where? In the desert. They studied out the text. They're about reading the scriptures. They're about knowing the text. They're about copying the text like, like Amir does. You know, Amir's been copying the scriptures. He's been writing them down. He's all the way, what are you, in Psalm 18 now? From Genesis 1, he's all the way in Psalms. He's been writing out the Bible. Yeah. So I said, hey, you should like create your old, own translation. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of translations. Just make it. Why not? It'll be fun. The apple dumpling gang version. <laughs> but they were out in the desert, and they were out there to memorize the text. And so they would get together and they'd learn the text and they'd study the text and they'd get in these groups and they would repeat what they, what they were taught and, then, and what they'd learned and then they'd go share it with their families and they'd go share it with someone else and they'd get, they'd get direction about what the text said and, they, would, and they, would, they, they were just all about the text. But they had to go to the desert to do that. They were so devoted to God's text. And you know, with our theme of closer this year as a church, Remember our prayer of Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. Remember our greater vision that we started the year with. Our, uh, what's our congregational vision? Our, our congregational vision is to be an Acts 2 church. We need to be devoted to the text. And so how is your text studies? How is your Bible studies? How is your devotion to the text? You know, getting into the text and really diving in to the text. Grabbing a new translation. How's your study of different texts going? You know, a little less than a year ago, we looked at different ways to study our Bibles because of, is it poetic literature? Is it narrative literature? Are we doing a topical study? Are we doing, what, what do we study? Are we doing law? Are we reading the laws of scripture? There's different ways to study those things out. Have we tried those ways? You know, are you learning to study your Bible more deeply with devotion? and fervor. You know, where were the Essenes? They were in Qumran, in the desert. That's where they were. They went into the desert so that they could learn the text. So that the text became their lives. They were all about the scriptures and they were so intentional about the scriptures and being students that they went to the desert to be distraction free. How distraction free is your time in the text? You know, the second thing about the Essenes is because they were all about the text, it did influence their lifestyle. They wanted to live holy, righteous lives, not corrupted by things of the world. And so, oh, just, just to let you guys know, I'm not saying, hey, let's pick up and go out to Preble County or something like that. And we, we, can, we can be, I'm not, I'm not saying that and be some secret community where we follow God. I'm, no, I'm not, I'm, not, no, I'm, not, I'm not going there. Just, just, just letting everyone know. But... They did what they did because they had a passion. They wanted to obedient and they wanted to be obedient to God's commands and they had an intense focus of God. And what can we do to have that passion right where we are? What do we what steps do we need to take? You know, when they went to the desert, they went there so that they could be people that text and live out a complete devotion and passion of God. And they did this because it's interesting, in, the, in, in Isaiah 40, verse 3, it says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness or desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Why did the Essenes go to the desert? Why did they go to the wilderness? Because the Essenes knew the text, and they knew that's where the Messiah is coming. They knew that because they were devoted to the text, they wanted to live out the text. They wanted to learn the text. They knew the Messiah would come to them in the desert. That that's where Jesus would come. That that's the one they were looking for would come. And guess what? The Essenes were right. 
because just a short distance from the Qumran, where that dotted line is, that does separate uh, Jordan and Israel. But the dotted line that goes up into the land, that's the Jordan River. Where was Jesus baptized by John the Baptist? In the Jordan River. How far is Qumran National Park today from the Jordan River? It's eight miles. That's how far it is. Eight miles away. They were right. Just eight miles away was the Jordan River and that is where John the Baptist was baptizing and that's where Jesus the Messiah came to be baptized. Right outside the Qumran community where they lived in the desert the Lord came. That's why for us to get closer to Easter, we got to begin in the desert. Because in the desert, that's where John the Baptist, that's where he goes, there is the Lamb of God. So what can we do about this? What is our takeaway today? We have to be willing to be in the desert because that's where you'll be molded. That's where you will get closer to God and where your relationship with God won't be like any other circumstance. It's where you can hear the voice of God and where you can depend on him. I think God wants us to be people of the desert. He wanted his people in the scriptures to be people of the desert. They went to isolated, solitary places often. They're willing to go to those desert places. We need to be willing to go to those desert places in our lives and create desert environments away from the noise. You know, God wants us to be a people of the text, and if you don't know it, find someone who can help you and teach you the text. So you can know it, and you can walk it, and you can live it, and you can breathe it. You know, and if you think you know the text, don't approach the text that way. Approach it with, I want to learn more. What else can I take from this? What else can I learn? What else? You haven't eaten the cherry on top yet, and you never will. And the desert circumstances that that is where jesus reveals himself in ways we never thought possible so for us to get closer to easter we need to start the journey in the desert and so i just leave you with this one idea create a desert environment but how do i make it hot it's cold no <laughs> create an environment where there's no noise turn off your phone get away from the distractions i know that's going to be really hard by the way I've got three amazing little boys that when I think I'm distraction free, within seconds, it's not. I was on the phone with Steve yesterday. I thought I had, was distraction free. I gotta go, Steve. See ya. Like instantly, like instantly, all of a sudden. But start with a small step this week. Just try and plan one hour this week where you can create a desert. And where you can just get away from everything. Maybe you gotta go to Houston Woods. Maybe you got to go to Caesars Creek. Maybe you got to go to Delco Park. Maybe you got to just lock the doors and, but then the TV's there and then YouTube's right there. And then, you know, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know, but carve out one hour of time, just one hour of time this week. And if that's too much, then make it 30 minutes. I, start somewhere. That's basically what I'm saying. And give God a platform for him to speak to you and for you to hear him. And you know what? Next week, we are going to continue this closer to Easter. We're going to look at John the Baptist. We're going to continue this journey until we get to the Easter story. So let's be the Miami Valley Church that goes to the desert so we can be closer to Easter like we never had before. And let's do that each step and each day here. Amen. Thanks so much.